Hello everyone, my name is Nicolo Zubini. I've been working on Project Mango on the environment, modeling, texturing, mainly the dome. As you can guess, a lot of interesting stuff happened and came out during Project Mango. I want to make some videos, like logs or walkthroughs more than complete tutorials. And one really interesting topic uh, that came out is the node groups and the use of no groups to organize your materials and how to make materials in cycles. There's still a lot to learn and discover about the workflows in cycles, but I want to start with this thing about shader presets, shader preset node groups, which I think it's really powerful, really interesting, and can have a lot of development also in the future. What you see in this material library is some texture node groups some blending node groups and some shaders node groups. Um, let's first clear the ambiguity with the term shaders. Shader sometimes, maybe most of the times, refers to coding a new material by writing new code for a render engine. Uh, this is not the case. What you see here is just some node groups with inside standard cycles nodes. But still, um, term shaders uh, fits well because uh, it means something that does the light and shadow on a material, so uh, something that controls the response to light of a material, and that's what the uh, BRDFs, BSDFs, uh, and um, output uh, um, nodes do in, uh, in, in cycles. Um, so uh, we could say that a single material is made by some textures that give the input colors, uh, some blending operations if necessary, and then at the end some closures or shaders or the um, effect in um, early versions of cycles, these nodes were called shaders, uh, and you could yeah you could say that the minimum amount of uh, nodes you need to do a shader is one BSDF and then the material output. Um, so yeah, this is what I mean by shaders, or to be clear, shader presets. Now, why why are they useful? Uh, well, first of all, it's something that typical of cycles and probably more in general with node-based render engines that you have to add a lot of nodes, almost identical every time thus base set of nodes that you have to add every time. So, for example, well, at least a diffuse BSDF uh, and generally a mixed node to control the uh, intensity of bump. Because if you plug your bump texture into the displacement socket directly, uh, what you get is 100% intensity, so you almost always want to reduce that setting it to a percentage of like 20%, 10 to 30% is already quite a strong bump in cycles. That's my experience with the uh, textures and the material I've, I've used. Second reason to use these node groups is to have some visual organization of your materials. So when you add them, first question is that you have at least to add a couple of nodes, more commonly five or six nodes and then the way you set them uh, just in the space of node editor then changes the way all your textures are um, organized and so it's also useful to have this to keep things aligned and organized and then you always know that in the first line on top you have diffuse color textures coming to this one socket and then all the glossy stuff and then all the bump textures but then there's one last reason to use these um, presets is that for every material you have a, an instance node group well one of these four could be five six for more advanced um, specific materials but still you have a very limited amount of um, uh, node groups where you can always add something like um, a technical or a visual tweak to your shaders and that will affect all the materials. So let's say you have like in the dome for Project Mango 100, 200 materials and 
you need to tweak the brightness and the contrast of all the textures or maybe you find some um, technical adjustment that will render up glossy reflection faster and well, you can put it once inside the this shader and it will affect all the materials that use it so that's also re really useful okay then let's look at the individual shaders these presets are based on the kind of uh, layers you find inside by layers I mean layers of BSDFs so if it has only the diffuse component if it has transparency if it has glossy one or two layers of glossy and two layers of glossy basically means car paint shader or fancy metal shader and well let's start with simpler ones I actually don't think I've used this one anywhere in the dome for Project Mango uh, but it's the base idea and yeah you can see it only has a diffuse with a socket for the diffuse color and it doesn't have the material output inside because you cannot group it unfortunately uh, because it always then connects to surface and displacement in the same way for all of this um, presets and the displacement is shown here as yellow means texture displacement that only takes the uh, value grayscale value but it's it's fine uh, you can see there's a mix node that mixes the bump texture with 50% uh, gray by the amount specified in this slider and yeah, you, know, you could plug in um, a texture in here but it's meant to be used as a number as a general multiplier for the bump texture as I said point 0.2 is a good default it's already visible strong bump if the source is contrasted enough and it's also interesting that this thing has been refactored midway while doing the dome without having any problems like what I mean is that originally I used a math node and a math node what it would do is it had also same uh, bump texture input and multiplier but if you set 0.2 the multiplication meant that the image instead of going from black to white would go from black and white would be remapped to 20% uh, of white uh, the result was basically the same but you know that bump is meant to be uh, with white sticking out 100% of the of the bump effect black uh, going inwards 100% and 50% gray being the base and so then I swapped the uh, math node with a mix node and this way no bump um, a bump multiplier of zero uh, means that the material is 50% gray which is the proper way then the difference is little but what's important is that I could do this without breaking any material after making hundreds of them because as long as the uh, input sockets stay the same what goes on inside doesn't matter and so if this was a math node connected to a socket called bump texture and a socket called bump, bump multiplier and you replace it with a mix node all the instances of this node group which is the way it's meant to be used uh, by mm, linking it into another scene or in the same scene and each group when you add it shift a group and you pick from the list uh, will be an instance of the original group so you modify one and all of them will be updated and the fact that as long as you keep the same sockets uh, it won't break the materials it's it's flexible enough it gives you uh, quite a bit of flexibility to refactor stuff as you go on and also you can add new sockets they will just appear in everywhere the uh, node group is used and again it won't break the material then let's look at the material standard diffuse plus glossy which is the one I've used for 99% of the materials really and it has a diffuse layer a glossy layer 
and the bump input. And then the other ones are parameters. Again, the bump multiplier, bump and diffuse color works as I just said. And the gloss layer instead is mixed in a way that is the way I prefer. I like. There are probably hundreds of similar, uh, basically equivalent ways to do this. But the way I like to set it up is like this with um, glossy as a texture that goes into color but also goes into the mix shader factor and also uh, taking into account a Fresnel effect. Uh, we'll see this. It goes into color to give the color, meaning the hue and saturation of the reflections. 99% of the times uh, this will be white, meaning not saturated. Most material have white reflections. The glossy component is white and only colored metals and some colored metal paint um, actually have some um, some hue and saturation in the reflections but still it, it's good to have it and it also goes to the mix shader so that the idea is that the more reflective the material is the less you see of the underlying diffuse layer which is a um, common way to set up materials in CG and also fairly representative of what normally goes on in materials in the real world. So then we have the, well, the roughness parameter for uh, the glossy is very important. Let's try it out. Connect the shader. If we raise the diffuse and leave the glossy to black, we get no reflections. And we don't get black reflections. We don't get them at all. Which is, I think, more intuitive because this glossy color affects the the mix between the two layers. Then vice versa, black diffuse, white reflections. Uh, we'll talk about the Fresnel multiplier and the Fresnel later. And let's look at the roughness. Zero is perfect mirror and then it goes rougher and approximately goes towards looking like a diffuse shader. Okay, then the Fresnel. The Fresnel is the most complicated part of this material. And it's the part that I said uh, it's subjective how you want to set it up. But basically what I did is this. You can consider the gloss color as the most important uh, multiplier and parameter to set the intensity, the final intensity of your uh, glossy layer and glossy color is where you plug into your specular channel textures. We can also say that the, this glossy color acts as the uh, maximum amount of ref reflectivity of the material and the minimum is instead determined by the Fresnel effect. Uh, what you get with a Fresnel effect is this. Let's set the Fresnel multiplier to 1 to get the full uh, effect of Fresnel and the index of reflection to 1.1 and you can see that we have some rim, rim effect uh, where basically your material will uh, reflect 100% uh, of this glossy color on the faces that are glancing angle, so the sides of the object it's clearly visible on a sphere and we reflect nothing uh, on the front facing faces of the object, so the front. As we increase this index of reflection, which is a property of uh, every different material, like 1.3 for water, uh, 1.6 for glass, and 2.5 for steel, we get a lot more reflections in the front of the object. But still, it's 
technically still going from being fully reflective on the sides to going not reflective on front faces except at 2.5 it's really only the front very front facing faces that will be non-reflective but this is generally not flexible enough for creating your materials but a lot of times you want to have an index of reflection that is a bit lower but still have some reflections in front and so that's this multiplier uh, where you set the, the slope the, um, the speed with which uh, the reflections goes from black to full intensity going from front to side you set it with the index of reflection but the starting point like front faces at 1 you will have no reflections at 0.9 you still have a 10% of reflections in front faces at 0.8 you get 20% and at 0 you get 100% of the reflections on the front faces and sort of a minimum value for the reflections and well a Fresnel multiplier of 0 is something you would use for a chrome material or I would probably still add 10-20% of Fresnel effect even to a chrome material but still the idea is chrome and at 1 what you get is something more like um, a coated shiny plastic but the Fresnel effect is very visible and this way with all these this three four parameters including the color uh, I think you can do all sorts of material you need to do let's just briefly look at how they are made technically where all the nodes are connected so you get the glossy color going to the color the roughness and also the glossy color going to a multiply node where you have this in the maximum glossy color multiplied by the Fresnel which will darken it based on the uh, angle of the face compared to camera and this factor will lower the amount of multiply so that you still get some of the glossy color even for front faces okay then let's see the this fourth shader and then the most complicated one this one is just the same as before but with an input for the alpha it says it has this gray socket and the slider because it's expecting a grayscale or it's in a way taking only the grayscale for from the texture you give it but you, you generally will put in uh, a texture because this is not uh, refractive uh, to refraction you use for glass this is for materials that have transparent areas like maybe leaves for vegetation and you just plug in here the texture and set the multiplier with a multiplier set to one it will behave like just just like the uh, standard diffuse glossy material but the idea is that you only use it if you really need to have the transparency layer and if not it's disabled it's not loaded it will speed up things a bit and you can see inside that you have uh, again it's not the color the thing we're going to tweak well you don't need to but the, in this preset uh, the alpha input is not connected to the color of the transparent, transparent BSTF it's connected to the factor of the mix shader yeah, here you have it. Um, yeah the, what you see black here is because I don't have enough um, transparent bounces so okay, no, this is out of the samples yeah. and you need to increase it if you have a lot of transparent uh, intersections okay let's now look at the last one the advanced diffuse and two glossy layers shader basically it's a carpet material or can be used for fancier 
uh, methods for close up or uh, high quality renders if you can afford the rend a bit more render time then you can use this also for any sort of metal uh, and well we'll see um, how uh, carpain uh, first I've set diffuse to black so we take the diffuse component out but it's generally going to be pretty dark diffuse just to act as a filler and then the main part of your material will be done by the glossy and this setup is meant to use a fairly maybe fairly low roughness for the first glossy layer like 0.3 is fine and then the roughness for the second glossy layer is fixed to almost zero this 0.02 uh, because yeah the idea for uh, painted metal car paint is that you have almost no diffuse component the material almost doesn't behave uh, as a diffuse material at all but you might have a base because helps to render faster and uh, still have something going on uh, for the diffuse channel then a glossy color that might have a roughness between 0.2 and 0.5 or 6 that will give the base color of the material which is normally given by a diffuse layer but for some, mat for some material it looks better it's more realistic more accurate to use glossy and then on top of that you have a coat a very shiny coat of mirror-like transparent uh, varnish or um, or actually in some metals could be even the, the surface of the metal itself that behaves like that even if it's not painted but then you would probably use this multiplier for the mirror layer that is the one the shiny one the, the one with glossiness uh, set almost to zero uh, you can use a multiplier of 1 or 0.5 for a car paint material where this um, coat effect is very strong and if you, what you're trying to do is uh, unpainting uh, stainless steel maybe then you can use it but at maybe 10-20% And so let's look at the parameters. The glossiness only affects the first glossy color layer. Um, well, so the roughness only affects the uh, first uh, glossy layer. The second one is mirror-like. Uh, the gloss multiplier is a multiplier for the amount of glossy color for the first layer. The mirror multiplier is the multiplier for the amount of mirror and then the index of reflection will affect both layers and then we have this good old bump texture with its own multiplier and you can see the connections the glossy layer is uh, said to be white for the mirror layer and has color option for the um, glossy layer and in the case of this kind of materials with two glossy layers yeah you generally want to color if it's a car paint you color the glossy layer and the diffuse layer generally a similar color and then leave the coat layer white it, you cannot change that it, I think Technically, it doesn't happen in, in nature that you have a coat layer that is colored. It can be the glossy of the material that is colored, but then the top layer it's always a, a varnish that has white reflections. And then you can see that the Fresnel, the multiplier, goes into both layers of glossy but with a different multiplier one is the glossy multiplier and the other one is a mirror multiplier so that's it i hope you enjoyed this video there will be more probably next will be about the organization of files for the dome library 
where the files, the textures, the objects, uh, the grouping, the naming, and now I sorted all the, the huge amount of models and stuff done for the DOM in Project Mango. And then for sure more stuff about the materials and the texturing and the modeling itself. See you soon.